Hey, it's me, Riley. I've been gone for two weeks because I was on vacation. I wasn't dead because I can't die. I'm an immortal cyber ghost. <laughs> Intel has admitted that their 13th and 14th gen mobile CPUs are crashing, but claim it's a totally different situation from their also crashing 13th and 14th gen desktop CPUs. The company has stated that they are aware of a small number of instability reports on their mobile processors, but they say these are common symptoms stemming from a broad range of potential hardware and software issues and not the same issue as the desktop chips. Then what Jacob wrote was, that's pretty crazy since Intel doesn't know what the root cause of the desktop processor issue is, except we literally just saw that Intel, like an hour ago, put out a press release saying that they had identified the root cause. Breaking news straight from Riley's phone. Just hold on, I got, I got, I got the news here. I got, it's, in, it's inside. So Intel's post about this says that there's an error in their microcode that resulted in incorrect voltage requests to the processor, and they're gonna be delivering a microcode patch to fix this uh, later this year in August, mid-August. So their original move of blaming motherboard manufacturers and gamers for overclocking their processors is sort of valid. The overclocking is coming from within the house. <laughs> <laughs> now that press release was just talking about the desktop processors. So Intel's claim here that that issue is separate from the one that's currently affecting mobile processors uh, might be true, might not. However, Matthew Castles, CEO of Alderaan Games, one of the studios that documented Intel instability in player crash reporting, has a different explanation for Intel's denial. Castles believes they are downplaying the mobile concerns due to the costs needed to rework the BGA packages used to solder their mobile processors to PCBs and to reduce harm to OEMs and partners like Razer and MSI. Before they announced the patch coming in August, Intel had been trying everything to solve these issues. Even going so far as to yank out the E cores in 11 new 14th gen SKUs. These new chips for embedded and commercial markets take a page out of your local underfunded public pool in that they're entirely full of P cores. P, 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 P core. Jessica liked that one. Microsoft has said that about eight and a half million Windows devices were affected by the CrowdStrike outage last week as Linux users laughed in superiority, seemingly forgetting that CrowdStrike has also caused issues on several Linux distributions. <laughs> last month, Red Hat reported that booting CrowdStrike's Falcon sensor process caused kernel panic, which is more of a Linux analog to Windows blue screens than it is a term for anxious corn. There are even reports of Debian Linux servers crashing and refusing to boot after a CrowdStrike update in April. While those issues seem to be fixed, some Windows machines may still be affected. Microsoft has released a recovery tool meant to help IT admins repair CrowdStriked machines. Delta Airlines, though, seems to still not have fully recovered since they've canceled 778 flights today. I'm sure tired families are excited at the prospect of being forced to spend more time together while they're stuck in the airport. Perhaps other airlines should consider being a bit more like Southwest, whose entire infrastructure runs off a single Commodore 64. Works for them. That's a joke, it doesn't. AMD is apparently putting all their efforts into making upcoming RDNA 4 graphics cards ray tracing beasts. Prominent hardware leaker Kepler tweeted out some alleged new features coming to the RDNA 4 platform. A lot of the leaked text is about as readable as the black speech of Mortor, but the double intersect ray tracing engine raises some eyebrows. According to PC Gamer, it implies that either RDNA 4 will have double the number of RT units that RDNA 3 has, or these units are able to process twice the number of ray triangle intersection calculations. Just get, calm down, guys. I know it's exciting. The point is this, number go up, gamer brain happy. But gamer brain no happy with performance rumors. Kepler also claims that while the ray tracing may be improved, the strongest RDNA 4 card will perform somewhere between this generation's RX 7900 XT and 7900 XTX. 
As for when we'll see these cards, Kepler alleges they will be unveiled early next year. That may mean they'll be launching alongside NVIDIA's RTX 50 series GPUs. As yet another leaker, our old pal copite 7 kimmy believes that Team Green is delaying the Blackwell launch from fall this year to CES next year. I'm not sure why, but I'm guessing they lost their prototype cards under a pile of money. And it's gonna take them months to check all those piles. They've just been, they keep coming in. We don't know where to put it. Fortunately, you only need to check out our sponsor. UPDF. A PDF editor is something that you don't think you need until you need one real bad and you look upon your past naivety with shame. Be it signing important documents or translating foreign recipes, UPDF's AI-empowered tools make editing and analyzing PDFs a breeze. Their OCR, or Optical Character Recognition, conveniently transforms images into editable text. You can also convert PDF files into other popular file formats like Word or the super popular and widely used bitmap file format. Remember bitmap? I don't, but UPDF does because they care. Check out UPDF using the link in the description today. As an undying, ageless being, I don't understand quick bits. Millennia are mere minutes to me. But I hear you like them, so here you go. The ROG Ally X is out and reviews are hitting every place that cares about reviewing the Ally X. Along with the handheld, Asus has released an update to the Armory Crate app to turn the AirSats game launcher into something players should dislike using slightly less. As for the new handheld itself, praise has been levied at the improved battery life and increased RAM, but some reviewers have complained of difficulty reaching certain buttons with smaller hands. Jacob's writing, I don't have that problem because my hands are so big, like you wouldn't even believe it if you saw them, just crazy big hands. But that's not true. I have. They're average at best. Normal hands. I'm immortal, normal hands. It's trade-offs. <laughs> Nvidia is working on a new variant of the company's B200 flagship AI accelerator. It could sell to the Chinese market without violating US export restrictions. I mean, they gotta get their AI chips from somewhere. Let them sell the chips, Joe. They're stepping down anywhere. I mean, who cares? Like, you're not gonna be there. It's like, uh, it's, yeah. It is officially over. Like, what? There's a chance Nvidia is wasting their money, though. According to Quartz, analysts think the U.S. is highly likely to ban Nvidia's last-gen H20 chip, which was designed for the same purpose. It's kind of rude. Who are we to restrict China's access to the Scarlett Johansson we have at home? Reddit has signed deals with several major sports leagues in the greatest crossover of all time. <laughs> between Redditors and sports. Anyway, they signed deals with sports leagues such as the NFL, NBA, and MLB. The sports leagues will post game highlights, behind the scenes videos, and AMAs with players, which sounds kind of cool until you realize it'll lead to more ads. Advertisers will show ads within these videos and the revenue will be split between Reddit and the sports leagues. This means Reddit is now the place where you can watch a worse version of TV while your data is being scraped for AI training. Rivian CEO, RJ, oh no, I don't know, Scaringi? Scaringe. Scringe. <laughs> Scrimmage. Leave all those in. Has told The Verge that the company will not be adopting CarPlay for its vehicles. Oh no, I have to say it again. Oh, oh, Scaringe, the CEO, not a scary orange. Okay, so I guess it's Scaringe. <laughs> said that his reasoning for not using Apple CarPlay is ironically similar to Apple's desire to control their own ecosystem. Scaringe also points out that if, that can't be right. Scrooge also points out that if Rivian instituted CarPlay, users would have to leave the app on the dashboard to do things like open the car's front trunk. Or, hear me out, you give opening the front trunk a separate button. The controls for a vehicle that can easily take a human life if you drop your attention for a moment shouldn't really be relegated to a bargain bin iPad. That's what, you know, that's what we think. And a 700 hertz refresh rate has been achieved on a CRT monitor. YouTuber Retro Gaming Base has been putting a 22 year old Ilyama Vision Master Pro 512 through the paces over the past couple of months by overclocking it to hit refresh rates of 255 hertz and above. Their latest attempt got the monitor to 700 hertz, much higher than the highest commercially available gaming monitor. There is a small downside. The maximum resolution the CRT monitor could achieve at this refresh rate was 320 by 120. But you don't need to see your enemies to feel superior to them. I mean, they... But hopefully we'll be able to see you on Wednesday 
because you'll have come back for more tech news at that point, right? Because that's what you're gonna that's what you're gonna do, right?